Okay, my friends, I'm going to try to do this as quick as I can. They are revisiting our early, our ancient past, uncovering startling new insights into the devastating end, Triassic mass extinction. And this is where everything on the earth basically died. And then they say that paved the way for the of the dinosaurs. So they say a research team from USC Dorsnuff has made significant discoveries regarding the drastic changes caused by a surge in greenhouse gases and escalating temperatures, which resulted in a mass extinction event, paving the way for the emergence of Jurassic dinosaurs. I disagree. Okay, I read through this thing. There's really nothing much to take away from it other than there was a mass extinction. And then they say then the dinosaurs came. Well, I'm going to tell you what became extinct and what the dinosaurs are a product of. They didn't just pop out of nowhere. All right, I'm going to tell you something. This is shocking if you haven't been around me, but it's true. This is a membrane. You have a membrane around every single bit and piece in your body. Even red blood cells have membranes surrounding them. Everything has a membrane. And this is what it's made out of, phospholipids. And guess how big these can get? This, my friends, is how big they can get. And they may even get bigger. I don't know. But every one of these is one of those little phospholipid parts. And it makes up a layer. And you have your little protein channels that go through and so forth and you have these little cholesterol spirals and there's a lower layer and then an upper layer and this is at least six feet apart this is how thick this membrane is now just to be sure that you understand what you're looking at here this is what the, the anatomical is this is it this is it now these all have little seals around them so that it's one big sealed surface, but it can be flexible, watch. You see how they have like little jelly little strips around them? When this was alive, there was glue. These were all glued together, but they were flexible. It was a very nice construction. And then through these pores were allowed things to come in and go out. Right? You have to have transfer, transferation between the, the membranes so that you can dump out the garbage and you can take in the good stuff. And that's how big these creatures were. So, think of how big the parasites would be. Now, I don't mean to freak you out, but it is what it is. And this dragon here is 1,100 miles long. And this is Typhon. He's written about attacking the gods who turned themselves into animals. And this apparently was a god that turned herself into a fish or himself and was attacked by Typhon. And this, I will show you, this is 1,100 miles long. You see it? 1,115. Now, here's what you're looking at on his head. All right, this is his head right here. And this is his throat. Runs all the way down, all the way down. He's on the ancient maps. He shows up with his th throat cut because it did get cut by Zeus. This is what they say. Now, all of the things that I have found point to the fact that these things were true that they were writing about. These are dragon scales. Open your mind up. Let your mind run free and clear for a minute. This right here is stuff that ran off of this dead, decaying body. This is just effluent. See, it's all like watery body fluids, basically. Now, this is where his body starts, right where the scales are. So up here is his body. This is his head. You see it runs all the way around real all unkempt and everything. It's exactly what they say about him. They say he had all his hair was all flashing this way and that way and he was spitting a great jet of fire against this fish below which is this fish right here. This gigantic fish. Just take your time and look. That's his fin. This is his actual body right there. Whoops. This is where the body actually is. And it's being invaded by this toxin that he's spitting down at him. 
And this is just an enormous, gigantic fish that apparently was a god that tried to hide from this guy because he was out to kill them all. And they said they, they fled from him and turned themselves into animals to try to avoid being killed by him, but this didn't work. Now, this is his body, and it runs all the way down. That's his throat cut right down here. You see it right there? Cut straight across. Shoo. Bleeding out in the desert. Black and red blood. That's what happens. That's the colors of blood. And this is his throat running all the way down, and those are the scales. All right, and this is the cut, and this is where it's, everything's running out. And it's just, that's exactly what it says in the ancient text. Zeus cut his throat with his great and mighty sword, which was apparently thunderbolts. Now his body runs all the way across here. His, his legs were the thighs of a human and then coils of vipers, and that goes way out here. And his tail runs all the way back here to the end where it had like flat, it looks like feathers. These look like feathers to me. They're some kind of dragon thing. But they look, certainly have the pattern of feathers. You've got to let it sink in for a second. You know, they're dragon scalish feathers. <laughs> That's all I could say. But they, they have the dragon look to them, but are, are they feathers? I don't know. But this is what's stuck way off to the end of his tail. This is the end of his tail, way out here. All the way across North Africa. Now here, he is leaking blood out, because this is a depression. Alright? There's blood up in here, and there's blood over here, and it sinks down, and it just drains out through here. Now I just did this thing on the centaur. And they were trying to figure out why this brown staining was happening. And it's the same deal. It's a collection of blood and fluids in one area, and it just sooner or later starts to work its way out. And the centaur it was lymph fluids, I believe. Now, this comes straight back to his body right here. And right here is his, uh, his rectum, right there. This side is the poop, and this side is the urine. This is what's called a cloaca. They all have, reptiles have these, and birds have these. All right? That's why they're growing stuff here, because it's fertile, and, and this is the poop side. And it came down here at one point, and I don't, it doesn't appear to be doing it now, but this became extremely fertile soils. Now this side is the urinary, and that runs down right alongside. All right, that's what's called a cloaca. And again, it's all dragon scales. This is all dragon scale stuff. And that's where it would have pooped out. And then the two of them match up together. And flow out together here. Same as a bird does. I don't know, it ends up going out in here somewhere. But this is a pretty good sized creature. Now, what happened? Why did we end up with dinosaurs? Well, the parasites on this creature would have been, he wouldn't even have even known he was had them, which would be the dinosaurs, the biggest dinosaurs. He would have no clue they were on him, none whatsoever. So what do they do after he dies? They can't feed off of whatever he's doing. So they start to crawl out here. And the dinosaurs would have gone into the terrestrial areas. And then the sea creatures, the sea monsters, swam out into the oceans. You see, off, right off of his body, they swam right onto the oceans and attacked sea, you know, they, they, they had to try to make a living, apparently, until the age of exploration and navigation came about, and then they just attacked the ships. Every single culture had the same story, they had sea monsters. They all had them, and they all killed them. Apparently, they killed them and killed them off. So that's where the sea monsters are, were, and the dragons were, I mean, the... Um, uh, dinosaurs were out here somewhere, you know, at some point this might have been green, I don't know. But in the other areas, that's what would have happened. All right, the, 
sea, sea monsters would have just swam right out there and tried to make a living out there somehow. Because right? this guy no longer could provide for him, being that he is dead. Okay, I, I, as I probably said, I know they're striking back, trying to fight against all this truth that I've been coming out with, that these creatures were real. The myths were real. Quetzalcoatl was real. This is the feathered serpent. Typhon was real. The centaur was real. All of these things that were written about were not just there to scare kids. They were real accounts, and Zeus's daughters, the Muses, about 800 B.C. in their area, went to Mount Helicon. All right, he, these were her, the daughters of Zeus, which was the premier god, and she went, or they went, to Mount Helicon, and they talked to Hesiod. Some of them pronounce it Hesiod. It's Hesiod. Now, he was a sheep herder. And they said, we want you to write all of the genealogy of the ancients, the gods. And he said, I cannot write. And they said, here is a magic rod. Sit down, write, and brrr, he started writing like crazy. And he wrote the Theogony, Ages and uh, Ages of Man, something like that. Um, and and it was he, he was he, it was a, a documentary about how everything started. I mean, really, everything started. How the Earth, literally, where that came from, I don't know, but the Earth had sex with the sky and brought forth all these monsters and giants and titans and all kinds of stuff. And all of these things were written in the ancient myth, which is not, to my way of thinking, myth. Because what I see and what I can verify supports these stories. And the same thing with the Mayans and the Aztecs and uh, down in Peru and everywhere else. Everywhere, everything I've looked into, the Norse countries, the Aborigines, they, they all had stories that are very, very similar. The Native Americans all had similar stories and all had gods and dragons and giants. Every single one of them. Not a single one deviated from that. Zero. Until we went into the culture and the age of enlightenment and academia. Then it all fell apart. And now is denied and refused to be examined because it's a, it's a world in denial right now. All right, I showed you how a membrane looks like. In this, you could lift this up and you could literally see through this. It would be so thin. And here's the one from Tyson. This is Tyson's Mud Fossil Adventures um, on YouTube. Tyson's Mud Fossil Adventures. And, you know, I've been working with him on and off for years now. And um, he's doing a fabulous job. He's got a drone. He comes out. He's, he's, he's pretty dedicated to doing this. And this is, it's a membrane. That's six feet or more thick. So think of the size of the creature. And this is the other stuff he's got. Everything's here. This is interstitium. And these interstitium balls are held by all this little fabricy stuff. And they can float around in your body. And, and you, it'll come back to basically where these are anchored. And here's the... Um, I got that shot of it. Here it is. This is basically what I was just showing you here. And they're anchored to all these little balls. And they can float around. in sort of a gooey mat and then they sort of come back to where these are locked in. Here's an, another shot of what they say it looks like. This here. Very simplistic but you get the point. Uh, what else here? Uh, he has, he's got a ton of stuff. Look at this. This is the same stuff. This is the interstitium it's on this whole... I mean, it's just everywhere. This thing's just absolutely gigantic, enormous. And these are those... Same thing I just showed you a second ago. Which is this stuff. And this is just eroded away down to where you're into this. 
And like I say, he's got a fabulous spot out there. And here's some more of his stuff here. Same stuff. He's got this one right here. That's I, I believe that's a membrane going right down. Zip. And you see those? Those I believe are the co little cholesterol channels. It separates one layer from another layer. And this is what it looks like once again. These are the little cholesterol jobbers holes going in. And uh, the rest was a membrane. It was laying like this way. But I don't know. That's just a guess. Anyway, the rest is, uh, there's no, not a whole lot of guesses here. It's pretty, pretty certain to what's going on. And these are all different membranes, too. These are all different layers of membrane from tissue from some gigantic, enormous creature. This is not evaporation and sedimentation and erosion and layering of anything like that. This is biology. It's a tissue of biology. And they all have different transition metals. It's just the way it works. That's the way biology works. Okay, I don't see any reason to go much further here with this. This is the membrane. Alright, don't forget, this is what a membrane looks like. Right here. Right? <laughs> That's a membrane. And it has eroded down to where you can see the skin at the top. And all of this fleshy stuff has eroded out. And it left all of these tendon balls laying all over the place. They were in this wall. That's what made everything restore. I'm telling you, there's nothing but biology. I don't care what anybody says anymore. I've done enough research to understand this implicitly. Now, this is, again, just, just absolutely gigantic. And it's the same as this stuff right here. You see all these balls? They're the same as these balls right here. And they rode right out of the skin. Because the skin of these creatures was just... I mean, look at this. Well, I, didn't, I don't have the picture over here, but I showed you about six feet apart from the lower level down here to the upper level of the, just the interstitium, which is this right here, six feet thick. Six feet thick, and us, that's, this is a microscope shot. And they just realized it even existed a couple of years ago because they never saw it until I pointed it out because of my mud fossils. It's the only way anybody ever knew. By the time they ever got them in the autopsy room, they were all dried, they were flat, and they thought this was one heavy-duty sheet. Meet your interstitial, a new found organ. It's 100% throughout the body. And now it's the most important organ in the body, they say. And here's what it looks like right there. This is the interstitium layers, and they separate all the different layers in your body. And they realize it now, and here's what it looks like when they're big. This is from Tyson, uh, Tyson Carlson's, Tyson's Mud Fossil Adventures. He's got, he, he's got some gigantic stuff out there. We're sort of in a little debate going on here between what this means, means and so forth at the moment. So, But, um, you know, we have maybe a little different take on what's going on, but I don't think so, totally. Anyway, this is all interstitium. These are all layers of biology. This is what's going on. This is, there's no way to dismiss this. You just can't deny it. This is here. It's right there. They just say, oh, well, that's just a formation. Well, tell me how that formation happened. Tell me how this formation happened. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. This is not just some nonsense out there. This is interstitium. And I've shown so many things that show that the Earth is completely 100% saturated with creatures. And that is exactly what they said in the ancient texts, which we consider to be fables and myth and just ridiculous stories made up to scare kids. No. You're going to be scared, I would imagine, if you're thinking, because this is scary stuff, but it's true. All right, so don't listen to Yale and all those people anymore. They're just making up stories to, to, to use you for your money. Basically, that's all that's happening right now. There's no way there's anybody as this incompetent as the people that I have dealt with at Yale. There's no, no, nobody could be this incompetent. So what, is it, what does that leave? You think about it.